gotta find your people The ones that make you feel all right The kind you wanna stay up with all night You gotta find your people The ones that make you feel whole They won't leave your side when you lose control The ones that don't let you lose your soul You gotta find your people The ones that get the joke To understand what you're saying for a word is spoke You gotta find your people To put the needle in the groove When you're together you got nothing to do When you're together you got nothing to lose Hey, what's up, guys? We're about to get service started. So if you're out in the foyer, would you guys come on into the sanctuary? And if you are in the sanctuary, would you guys stand with me? Uh, for those of you guys who don't know me, my name is Matt. I'm one of the pastors here on staff at Pathway Vineyard. Uh, this is my friend Christy, and this is my friend Eunice. Um, and we're going to lead us this morning in singing some songs to God. But before we get started with that, we're going to begin in the habit that we are in tradition of doing by praying for another body of faith in the area. So would you guys join me in praying for Lisbon Falls Baptist Church? You can extend your hand if you feel comfortable. So Lord, we just lift up our brothers and sisters over in Lisbon Falls. We just thank you that there's a congregation of faith in the neighborhood who names the name Jesus. Lord, we know what a healthy church can do and what an impact it can have on the people living in that community. And so we bless them today. We bless them as they hold services. We bless them as they impact the community around them. And Jesus, we pray that they would see more of your kingdom come this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, one more quick piece of business before we jump into singing some songs. So we're going to do a new song today. If you guys are tracking, uh, the first Sunday of every month, we'll do a new song. Um, and whenever we do a new song, sometimes it can be a little intimidating. We don't really know the words or the melody, um, and it can kind of take us out of a posture of worship. So it's also a great time for me uh, to explain what are we even doing here and why are we even singing in the first place. So we sing primarily because God asks us to. The Bible tells us that we are the singing children of a singing God who sings over us. So singing is part of who we were created to be and it's part of how God asks us to engage with him. But what are we singing? 
what we're singing is songs of praise, worship, and thanksgiving. Right? We don't sing necessarily because we feel like singing. I don't know about you guys, but I don't always feel like singing first thing on a Sunday morning, especially not rock and roll style music. And I'm the one with the guitar, so I'm thinking if I'm feeling that way, you guys are probably feeling it twice as much. But God asks us to sing praises to him that sing about who he is and what he's done above all things. Not because I want to, but because he's worthy of that praise. Amen? So as we sing new songs, what we can do is we can still press in and worship even if we don't know the words, right? Because what God cares about is the posture of your heart, not getting it all right. So I just encourage you, if you're in that space and you don't really know what we're singing, and you don't really know what we're doing, continue to press in in that heart space. Because how many of you also know that today you have a unique sacrifice of praise that you can bring to God? How many of you know that, right? And it's unique because you are unique. Nobody else can offer God the heart that you can offer him. Nobody else can offer God the song that you can offer him. But it's also unique because today is unique. This hour is unique. Tomorrow you will not be the person you are today, and today you are not the person you were yesterday. So whatever today brings for you, highs, lows, good and bad, you can turn that towards the Lord and offer him that as a sacrifice of praise. So are you guys ready to just offer a unique sacrifice of praise this morning? Yeah? So let me just pray for us and then we'll worship. God, thank you so much for bringing us all together today. I just thank you so much for each and every person who has found their way into this room. And Lord, I pray that in you they would find hope, they would find community, they would find family. Jesus, I just am getting the sense that already this morning you want to break off a spirit of anxiety in this place. And maybe broken off through a spirit of worship, Lord, would you just release us to worship? Would you come and inhabit the prayers and the praise of your people this morning? In Jesus' name, amen. Why don't you guys turn to your neighbor, high five, and say let's worship.
It's the song of heaven rising, rising. Join the song of heaven rising, rising. It's the song of heaven rising, rising. Join the song of We sing in worship and in wonder Saying you alone outrun like any other Hear our praises as we welcome you together Jesus Let's sing in you Find a true and firm foundation There's no need to fear, no need for hesitation There's a name that echoes over all creation Jesus, sing with the mind 
So lift him high above the heavens Over every situation that surrounds us And sing his name with expectation For the God of our salvation is among us Sing it here
Church family, my name is Josh Miller. Today we have the privilege of coming together to partake in communion, a sacred act of worship and remembrance. If you need a communion cup, they're available by the entrance doors. Communion is more than just a ritual. It's a powerful reminder of God's love for us and the sacrifice Jesus made on the cross for our sins. As we gather around, Let's prepare our hearts to receive and reflect on what this moment means for us as believers. The Apostle Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. As we hold the bread and the cup in our hands, Let's take a moment to reflect on what Jesus did for us. His body was broken and his blood was shed so that we could be reconciled with God. This is a time to remember his sacrifice, his love and his victory over sin and death. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you with humble hearts, acknowledging our need for your grace and forgiveness. We confess our sins and ask you for mercy. Thank you for son sending your son Jesus to die for us, to bear our sins and to grant us eternal life. We are grateful for this opportunity to remember and celebrate his sacrifice. Bless this bread and cup as we partake in communion and draw us closer to you and to one another. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As Jesus took the bread and gave thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat the bread together, remembering that Christ's body was broken for us. In the same way, Jesus took the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us drink from the cup together, remembering that Christ's blood was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. As we have shared in this communion, let us be reminded of the unity we have in Christ and the love that binds us as his body, the church. May God bless you and keep you as you walk in his light. Been 
God is so good. And uh, this morning, we're only going to have one person up here sharing their testimony, but you guys singing that song, that's your testimony to God saying, yeah, life's been hard. I've gone through some stuff, but you've always been there. And so we praise you and we thank you that you are always with us. We love you, Lord. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Awesome. So good to be with you this morning. So good to worship with you. My name is Seth. I'm one of the pastors here. And uh, this morning, our food pantry is open after the service across the street. Just find the open door and you'll make your way into the, uh, the pantry. Plenty of food for everybody. Anybody in need, please make your way over after the service. Uh, our senior pastor, Alan, is on vacation this week. So I would encourage you to pray for him so that when he comes back, he is refreshed, renewed, and that God, he's just met God in a whole new way this week. So please pray for him. And then uh, this morning, if you came and you've got a tithe, you've got an offering that you want to give back to the Lord, please do so. On your way out, there's boxes at every door. You can put that in. You can always give online as well. Church Center app or through our website. Prompts on the screen. And uh, let me just pray a blessing over that. So God, thank you so much. You are so good. And so, God, we just give back to you, and we just ask you to bless all that's giving in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's check out the screens for this week's announcements. Hey, welcome to Pathway. We're glad you're here. My name is Malik. I'm on staff here at Pathway. And if you back there are new, we would love to connect with you. If you are tech savvy, scan the QR code with the smartphone, fill the connect card out right from your phone and see. If you prefer paper, pen, and people, we have a new and improved connect card just for you. We can see the upcoming events, sign up for a prayer request, all while staying connected to our other campus and locations. You can find these cards in the chair batch or information booth. Regardless however you fill it out, come to the info booth but every newcomer gets a gift just to say thank you for checking this out today. Sixth grade step up. Here at Pathway, we love to celebrate milestone moments. Going to sixth grade is definitely one of those milestones we want to celebrate. We also want to pray, speak encouragement, protection, and strength over your child who's stepping up to sixth grade. Sign your middle schooler up using the Church Center app. See you at Step Up. Endurance and Combined Summer Retreat with other area vineyard churches at Pilgrim Vine in New Hampshire. Deadline to register is August 2nd. Sign your teams up using the Church Center app. See you at Endurance. Youth Rule Ball Open House Parents Team. We invite you to our youth group open house this fall, August 14th, 6 p.m. through 8 p.m. Come and see what youth group is up to. Ask questions, play some games, all while getting to know your youth group leaders and members. Sign up using the Church Center app. See you there. Memberships. Have you been attending Pathway and interested in getting an understanding of what it means to be a member here at Pathway? Or are you absolutely sure you want to join Pathway as a member? Then join us August 20th at 6 p.m. for membership classes in the Pathway Cafe. Sign up using the Church Center app. See you at membership. And for our final segment, did you know in 1919, August 8th, frozen custard was a mistake made by Tom Carvel. By adding eggs to his frozen treat recipe, made the ice cream fluffy, soft, and light. That mistake created what we know as soft serve Carvel ice cream. So if you would please stand, go find a neighbor and recommend a good ice cream spot. As always, we hope you feel loved and welcome. Yeah, thank you.
Good morning. <laughs> Fourth time to try. Here we go. My name is Bill Legere, and this is uh, Teresa and I, along with the, our leadership team for the uh, youth group, are here today to uh, welcome up all the incoming ninth graders. So if you're entering ninth grade, come on up and join us. We'd like to celebrate your transition in life. There we go. Even if you didn't sign up, come on. We're, we, we're, not, we're happy to see you. No girls, really? I will seek you out if you didn't come up. Let's see. Well, this, this is, uh, come on in, guys. It's great, um, literally, guys. Um, it's great to have you here, and as you know, in the vineyard, we celebrate transitions in life, and this is a big transition, and we're happy for you, and, and we want you to know that we're behind you 100%. Hey, there we go. Um, so, one of the things that's really important to us is to know that as you enter high school, for, my, for us as youth leaders, nothing changes. You are now, not later, part of the church. You are as important to this church and its function in everyday life in everyday community outreach as anybody in this building. And we believe in you and we believe that Jesus has you here for a reason, okay? So I just wanna share with you just real quick, we're gonna look at, um, we rely a lot on the idea of Paul and Timothy. Um, the Vineyard does a program called Project Timothy. We talk a lot about how Paul treated Timothy. Timothy would have been about your age when Paul started to really uh, engage in him. And so I'm going to read you a short passage of scripture, and then I have a challenge for you and then for your parents, okay? So in 2 Timothy 1, 5 through 7, Paul says, I'm reminded of your sincere faith, the faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now, I'm sure, it dwells in you. For this reason, I remind you, and this is important, to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of hands. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. To you guys, I challenge you that this flame that is your faith, don't let it turn into an ember and then let it turn into coals. Do things that flame your faith so it becomes an everyday part of your life. Coming to church once a week on Sunday is probably going to give you embers. Come to, come to youth group on Wednesdays. So let, let us flame your, your fire, your faith into something more, right? This is, um, this is a tough time in life. You guys know it. You're already feeling it. We know it. Uh, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of tricks of the devil. There's a lot of our flesh that wants things that are not compatible with what we've come to believe are important. And you know, frankly, the world wants nothing more for you not to succeed. And we want Jesus to give a better path for you guys. Now to your parents, I'm gonna tell you, um, this is a tough time. There's gonna be weeks that they don't wanna do things. There's gonna be weeks that faith isn't important. Encourage them, just as Lois and Eunice did. We are part of a continuum of care from your house to what goes on in the next stage of life. We know that the people who stay in church and stay serving Jesus after high school are the ones who make connections with adults uh, and can make connection in ministry. So I encourage you to utilize the resources that we have. And this, uh, this is a half of our leadership team for youth group. But they will pour into these kids and love them and care for them every step of the way. So we love you guys, we're thankful for you. We look forward to working with you through uh, this next phase of your life. So if you could all reach your hands out, we're gonna pray for them. Father God, we are so thankful for this uh, group of students, and we pray for those that are not with us this morning. We know that there's a lot. And Lord, as they make this transition, as they gear up for the coming year of school, I just pray that you would have a hand of blessing on them. Lord, I pray that the flame that is faith in them would be fanned in such a way that they would be lights in the world around them. Give them the courage, give them the strength, give them the uh, power to use your way in the world around us. We just thank you for them and bless them. And God, I just pray for their parents. I pray that as they manage through the parenting of this time, that you would give them wisdom and insight and encouragement. And I pray that it would be um, a relationship of growth and not conflict. And that at the end, your kingdom would be here. In your name, amen.
All right. Well, this morning, we are going to continue with our summer series, uh, Telling God's Story Through the Lives of the People of Pathway. And today, uh, after today, actually, we only have three more stories to share uh, before we go back to the book of John in September. So this is our third summer doing this series, and it's quickly become at least one of my favorites, one of the things that I love to do, because I love to hear people's stories. I'm a firm believer that everyone has a story worth sharing when they're ready, and that you never know what kind of journey the person sitting near you may have been on. Uh, kind of like the old saying, you can't judge a book by its cover. So this morning, we have Nicole Rand here with us, and she's joined by, I think, a couple of your kids, right? Yeah. But one of them, where's Kelsey? This is Kelsey. <laughs> if you haven't met her yet, she's a future preacher, and uh, you'll all see why in a little bit. Uh, now, perhaps you've seen Nicole here before, sitting usually in the back row of this section during second service, uh, almost always in that corner, or maybe you've seen her around campus taking pictures of everyone getting baptized or kids unleashed or at car care, and you've wondered, well, what is her story? Well, at this time last year, not only did I not know your story, I didn't even know you. And then God, in his sovereignty, connected us through a hardship that I spoke of on one amazing Sunday morning uh, last August as our worship team was finishing up the song, You Meet Me Here, with the lyrics, you don't give up when I do. You don't walk out when I threaten to. You are steady when I can't be still. Your love finds me, and it always will. Check out the screens for what happened at the conclusion of that song. I'm being hit with um, a hardship, and um, I walked out. I had to walk away. I couldn't handle it. It was too much for me to carry on my own, and my thought was, I need to, like, to leave. And in the midst of that, I thought that I was kind of walking away from God, too. I thought, you know what, I've got to go away. I've got to, I've got to leave the situation. And then I turned around, and I realized God was right there. He didn't leave because I left. He was right there with me. And so whatever you're struggling with right now, whatever you're going through right now, just know that you can't walk away from God because when you finally turn around, he will be right there with you. He never leaves us. He never leaves us. He is always there. And what was amazing was now, there was a lot more to that, to that video and to that Sunday. There was at least 20 people who ended up giving their hearts over to Jesus that day. Uh, there were so many people who came up for prayer. This whole front was filled. And one of those people was yourself, which we'll get to in a, met, in a minute. But first, why don't you tell us uh, why and when did you come to Pathway? I came to Pathway about a year prior to um, when a mentor in the business world um, had passed away. He was actually a member of um, the Mechanic Falls Vineyard. But because of his presence in the community, they actually had had his funeral here. I had actually swore I would never walk into a church again, but to honor him, and because he meant so much to me, I actually came. And when I came, I did not sit in the back for the first time. I actually sat in the middle. And the Lord just, I, he, there was something about this place that God planted a seed and later on would bring me back. Now was that, when you did come back, was that your first Sunday, the one that we just saw on the screen? And how did God use those words to make an impact in you? It wasn't my first Sunday. When I had been coming to Pathway about a month and a half prior to, um, like I said, I sat in the back row. I didn't want anybody to talk to me. I didn't want anybody to see me. I was so broken. I was having major panic attacks and massive anxiety. I was so emotionally, physically, and mentally tired that I was actually suicidal daily. What kept me coming was that I could feel peace here. I could tell the Lord was in this place. You guys at the time were doing testimonies, um, and I was able to hear real people talk about real problems and believe in a God that believe, believed in a God who was with them in their brokenness and was actually actively working in their lives. I desperately wanted what everybody here seemed to have, unconditional love. All the testimonies spoke to me that day, but Emily's, and Patrick's touched my heart in a different way. 
I was saved in 2005, but up until that moment, I had actually seen God in the way I had been treated all my life. I saw God as angry at me for messing up so much and punishing me for everything I had done. I couldn't be enough for God. How could he love somebody like me? I was so full of shame and self-hatred. My past had taught me, you work for love, you earn love. If you do good, you get it, and if you don't, you don't. My past taught me to wear a mask, how to look the part, and the pains I needed to hide. My childhood had so much bad happen to it that it seemed to kind of set the tone for the rest of my life. At the age of three, my dad gave me up for adoption to the man that my mom was fixing to marry. At five, I was sexually abused by a family member who was tasked with watching me. She told me, don't tell anybody, it's your fault. I would be in trouble if I said anything and everybody was mad at me. This, at five years old, made me feel like I was an abuser. It made me keep a secret and it was the start of my self-hatred. At eight, I lost three of my grandparents, which caused my mom and my dad to drink heavily. This would trigger many years of physical and mental abuse. At 13, my mom had had enough and she decided to leave, but not without first telling us children if we were just better kids. At 14 and 15, the man who had actually chose to love me and adopt me decided I had made too many mistakes and withdrew that from me, denouncing me as his daughter and denouncing me as his. I wasn't even good enough for somebody who chose to love me. At 16, I became emancipated from the parent, my parents and went on to the world and bounced from place to place. I went on as an adult looking to be loved, but I chose relationships that would mimic my childhood, finding relationships that would emotionally, mentally, spiritually, sexually, and physically abuse me, leaving me so empty and so tired. It had to be me. If I wasn't, God would have helped me I must deserve all of this. I now believe God was somebody I had to perform for in order to be loved. And if I didn't do a good job, I would be rejected. And I really thought I deserved everything that had happened to me. Well, first of all, I just want to say how brave you are for coming here and sitting in front of all these people and telling us about this part of your past. Thank you. And at this point um, in your story, did you have any sort of foundation or roots in Christ that could have helped you through some of these horrific experiences that left you feeling like this was all your fault? Um, yeah, my parents were Catholic, so I grew up in the Catholic Church um, doing the Catholic ri ri bleh, sorry, rituals, um, even serving and singing in the choir. So I believed in God, even in Jesus, but the side of God that showed I was a sinner who deserved to be punished. I was never taught of God's love, mercy, and grace. Are you able to look back and see at any point in your past in which you felt like God was there or that he was providing for you? <laughs> at the time, no. Um, today, yeah, I can look back and I see, can see that God was walking with me. He protected me and provided for me. I was just really unable to recognize it at the time. A beautiful example are my four amazing children of who saved my life <laughs> more than one time. Had I not had my son at 17, 18, I would have had a life of drug abuse and alcohol. And with the birth of every child from God, my strength to be better kept growing. I wanted my kids to have a better life than I had. Troy, Amber, Kelsey, and Autumn are the best thing that have ever happened to me, as well as my grandbabies now. They are my heart. The birth of Kelsey was another instance in my life where God was so present, even though at the time I couldn't see it. Kelsey was born at 26 and a half weeks with a tumor that weighed as much as she did, two pounds. I can remember up until 26 weeks, they kept asking me to abort her. And when I went into labor, they put me to sleep because they had to make sure that the tumor wouldn't rupture. 
which would have ended both of our lives. Before putting me to sleep, they told me not to get my hopes up that I probably wouldn't wake up to a child. Once she was born, well in the NICU, they told me I was selfish for not pulling her life support, that she was going to have no quality of life, and that she would be bedridden. I don't know in those moments where my faith came from. I do now, but I didn't then. But I remember telling the doctors, you do what you can for her. And if God wants her, no matter what he, what you guys do, he's going to take her. And if he doesn't, he's going to give me what I need as a parent to raise her. During the first nine years of her life, she went through 51 surgeries and multiple procedures. Her fight and her beautiful smile pushed me to want to be a better mom. I pulled myself up, went back to school, received my GED, and then on to a bachelor's degree. I mean, as a dad and uh, as a parent, I cannot imagine what you must have gone through during those years. I mean, seriously, like, how did you survive nine years watching your daughter go through surgery after surgery while raising your other kids as a single mom, all the while getting a degree in mental health and human services and battling what you've told me was a severe weight issue? Yeah. Um, at the time, I was in automatic mode, doing what I had to do to survive, but I wanted so badly to be a mom my kids could be proud of. But inside, I was fighting all the past traumas which showed in my weight. At the time, my weight was topping around 400 pounds. My weight was a picture of how I felt about myself on the inside and the control over my life I was desperately trying to have. But looking back now, the best answer and seeing the whole picture is that the Lord says he knows you before you, were foom, before you were formed in your mom's womb. He knows every battle you will face, and he knows every tear you will shed. He equips you with the things you need. He formed me to be a fighter, and then promised me he wouldn't leave my side. That's right. And is that about the time that you accepted Jesus? Yeah. During this time, I was searching so hard for anything that made sense and give me an answer. Um, I even tried to go into witchcraft, but the Lord quickly um, got me out of that one. The year I graduated, I met a man who I was telling about all my brokenness and just saying how much I thought God hated me and how mad he was at me. He quickly told me a story of David and how God, David was a sinner and he um, committed adultery and murder, but he was a man after God's own heart. And if he could forgive David... I hadn't committed murder. Why couldn't he forgive me? I remember that night going to bed and crying and just telling Jesus, if this is real, God, I want it. I want it. And that night I accepted Jesus into my heart. I was so hungry for the word after that I joined a church, but I didn't realize until later it was legalistic. It fed into my fear that God had forgiven me, but not for everything. For instance, that secret when I was five. I had to perform to be good enough for God. If I prayed, read my Bible, was the perfect submissive wife, then God would bless my life and I would find favor in his eyes. But I was taught differently. My daughter Kelsey was going through her fifth brain surgery in a week. My pastor at the time came to visit and he sat in the room with me and he said, Nicole, you really need to search your heart. You obviously have some sin in your life that you're not admitting to. Now, any mom of a special needs child understands that somewhere in your heart, you wonder, did I do something wrong? And this fed into that fear. I was bad, I deserved to be punished, and now the one thing I never wanted to do hurt my children, I was doing. During this time, I had been serving God with everything I had. I was learning my Bible, I was reading, I was praying, I was being everything I was supposed to be for God, but it wasn't enough. Eventually, several years later, after having to leave a marriage of 15 years, I walked away from serving God. I ran as hard and as fast as I could. Everybody in my life was telling me I was no good, and now God was proving to me that I wasn't. Because if I was, if I was his, then at least he'd give me one adult in my life that loved me. Well, if I could just kind of pause here and do a quick recap of that time period. Um, you've met Jesus in a powerful way, and you've learned of God's heart for all of humankind, and that he loves us despite our imperfections, and then you've been lied to 
and misled and had scripture misquoted and told again and again that you aren't good enough and that the things that are happening to your child are your fault. Now, I'm not sure if this is how it works, but if I could, I would like to apologize on behalf of those who said those things, including that pastor, and say, I am sorry for what has been said to you. You don't deserve that. That is not true, those are lies. For when you accepted Jesus Christ as your savior, your sins were forgiven and forgotten. And you became his daughter, beautifully and wonderfully made in his image. You are dearly loved and you are precious in his sight. And because you are with him, you are good enough. And this week, I know that you told me that hearing all of this is hard to accept because of how many times you told that, that you've been told that you weren't good enough. And so I pray, and I ask you guys to pray for her, that God would begin to break that off of her. That the, you'd let the past rest in the past and begin to see yourself the way that God sees you. For you are absolutely enough because he is with you, because he is enough. And Psalm 16, eight says, keep your eyes always on the Lord, for with him at your right hand, you will not be shaken. First John 4, eight says, you are loved because God is love. So may God truly show you who you are, and may you accept that in full. And then for all of you ladies or men out there who think that you're not enough, I would say the exact same thing to you. If you don't think you're enough, know that God thinks you are. Trust his opinion more than anybody else's. And at the end of today, if you need prayer for something that's happened in your past, today's the day to do it. God doesn't make mistakes. He loves you. But let's go back to last August when you came up for, when you came up for prayer. Uh, what happened on that day and in the days to follow? God says he leaves the 99 to go after that one, and that's exactly what he did. The Lord lovingly pursued me until I walked back into the vineyard in 2023. He had been shining his light into my darkness for weeks, but all I could hear was the anxiety, the panic, the depression, the shame. The last 40 years of voices spoke so loudly in my head, saying, nope, not for you, Nicole. You turned from God. How you knew his love and you turned from him. How could he forgive me? But God's words rang louder. As you stated in the video, no matter how far from God you try to go, he never goes from you, he's right there. At that moment, it was as if those words were meant just for me. I slowly, hesitantly, made my way down to the front. I was crying so hard. I am not even sure Gino knew what I said. But Gino spoke the words into my heart, the words I desperately needed to hear. You are God's daughter. God loves you so much. You are a child of the great I am, and in him you can. This filled me with the hope I was so desperately needing. God began to show his heart and his truth, and the truth being preached week after week. Alan one day was teaching on Adam and Eve and how God knew Adam and Eve were gonna sin and he could have wiped them off the face of the earth and nobody would have known the difference. But instead, he loved his creation so much that he actually found a way for salvation for them. And in that moment, again, God spoke to me in my heart. For the first time in my life, I knew that it wasn't about the individual, it was just about me and God. God knew my heart, he knew all the sins I was going to commit, he knew all the sins that were going to be committed to me, and yet he chose to make me. He chose to love me, and he has a purpose for my life. After that, major healing started, and God opened so many doors with Life Group and then Celebrate Recovery. CR has brought me to a healing I never thought possible. The shame, the self-hatred, the years of abuse are being peeled away, along with the support from some amazing, amazing, amazing people in this church who love the Lord and are listening to God's heart and speaking truths into mine. You all have played such a vital role in my story. Through Jesus and this community, 
I finally know I am a child of the Most High God. I am his daughter and he loves me. I am forgiven, but not because of anything I am, but because of who he is. And I get to play a beautiful part in his story. Right, isn't that awesome? I love hearing you say those things about yourself. Uh, hearing you speak that truth, just like Gino did, I think Gino's here today. Uh, Gino's a longtime Pathway member, a man of prayer, and what he said sounds to me a lot like uh, one of my favorite verses, 1 John 3, 1, that says, see what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are, with an exclamation point. God lavishes us with a deep love that covers all. And for those of you wondering about Celebrate Recovery, uh, it meets once a week, every Thursday, 6 p.m., right across the street. It's for anyone dealing with any sort of uh, hurts or habits, any sort of hang-ups, or maybe even if something that was said today might have triggered you. And I was at CR about two months ago, and that's where you told me about how our stories had connected when I played that same video during my testimony while I was there that night. And you came to me afterwards and told me how those words that God had put on my heart helped you stop yourself from hurting yourself. Mm -hmm. And I just blown away by that, and I love how God brought our stories together. And so at this point, finally, we want to hear from Kelsey. So check out this video in which I asked her to answer a few questions, starting with one about where she volunteers on campus. I am a volunteer for um, Pathway, um, their greeting team, and it's been a blessing to be able to work with Patrick and to be able to get connected with other Christians who have the same love for Jesus, just in different ways. and. Pathway has shown me how loved and wanted I have been, and it's just been a blessing to be able to be a child of God, and I just don't know where I'd be without being a Christian. Being a Christian makes me feel so happy and so loved, and if I wasn't a Christian, I don't honestly know where I'd be. So you told me that you had cerebral palsy yes. and stage three uh, kidney? It's called chronic kidney disease. Okay. It's between the stages of three and four. We don't know yet. Is that scary for you? Oh yeah. <laughs> My doctors, nope. Every time I, every time I go to my doctors, they, I always feel like they give me the negative of of my um, my results. But I remember in my head that it's not about doctors. It's not about I'm not here to focus on doctors and nurses and all the negatives. I'm here to focus on Jesus and what he did and what he's going to do. Amen. And I cannot wait to experience more life with him and to be able to walk the streets of gold and to be able to be pounding on his door and to be able to be sitting at his table and ask him all of the questions and have him tell me why I've had the struggles I've had and to get those answers. I cannot wait for the answers. I can't wait to be alive again through Jesus and not have limitations. I'm, I'm, if it's okay to say, I'm very exhausted with 
having my limitations down on earth. I'm very exhausted with the stage three chronic kidney disease. I'm exhausted with the crutches and the, this body is not me. I cannot wait to have my glorified body. I am, I am so excited. I cannot, like I've had dreams. I told you about that dream. I've had dreams about it and it's just, I feel like it comes in a wave and just hits me in the face and says I'm here. I want this church to remember to never let go of the love of Jesus and to focus on how much we are loved through him and not through the lies of the devil or the lies of the world and to just focus on he's got you. He's got your arms. He's, he will never leave. He will never forsake. And he's always going to be there. Thank you, Kelsey. It's been such a joy hanging out with you this week. And uh, just to think, doctor said, no chance with this one. Man. So, um, have you got life figured out yet? <laughs> Everything good? No. no. <laughs> um, right now, I'm still sitting in some really challenging circumstances. Housing, my business, finances, health stuff with me and my children. But... As God has me sitting in this season, I am learning to let go and trust in a God who has always been next to me and always will. Right now, he is building the sweetest relationship with him that I could ever ask for. And I am learning that I am unconditionally loved by my heavenly father, my Abba. He has given me a peace I never knew I could know. And he is making beauty from ashes. Well, as we wrap up, I'm going to read part of a devotional that you shared this week, and it felt like something that I should read over her today. It's from Waking Up to the Goodness of God by Susie Larson. Consider your story for a moment. You've grown in ways too many to count. You know things now you didn't know years ago. You have a firmer grasp of God's goodness and a sturdier hold on his promises. Yes, you've walked through much pain, but you're still standing. He's so honored by your heart to worship him while you wait for him. He's making a valiant warrior out of you and teaching you to live loved, regardless of the seasons you walk through. Whenever you dare to believe he is good while life is hard, heaven cheers, God is glorified, and you are changed. We can't measure our gains by the battles we face. We measure our progress by the people we're becoming. And so we're going to close today by having, uh, Nicole's going to read one of the most meaningful passages of scripture to her, Psalms 139. And as she reads it, consider how it parallels with the story she's just told. Oh Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down. You are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but oh God, you know it all together. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high I can't even attain it. Where should I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into the heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as day. 
The darkness and the light are both alike unto you. For you formed me, my inward parts. You covered me in my mom's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and my soul knows very well. My frame wasn't hid from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book they were all written. The days fashioned for me when yet they were none. How precious are your thoughts of me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more than the numbers of the sand. And when I awake, I am still with you. Well, almost one year ago today, God used an unexpected hardship to help get me on stage to say the words that you needed to hear in a desperate moment. And this year, she's the one on stage, and I believe that you're saying the words that somebody here needs to hear. Let the shame be gone, the anxiety gone, and may we remember the words that Kelsey ended with. He's with you. And so I'll ask you to answer the same question I asked your daughter. Just the final thing, what would you like to say to Pathway as we finish? Life is hard. And in the dark moments when you're laying on that bathroom floor and there is nothing in your heart but, oh God, just know he sits with you in the pain. He's holding your hand and he's catching every tear. He promises he's there. He loves you. His promises are truth. He can't lie and the cross is proof of it. Lean into him and let him show you his love for you. All right, let's stand. All right, if I could get the prayer team to come forward. All right, we're gonna close. Um, I just, if there's anything that's been said today that you feel like, I need to get prayer today, don't let anything stop you from doing so. We'll have plenty of time for that. Um, and so I just want to close this by saying, God, I just, I thank you for, for Nicole and for Kelsey. I thank you for their story that you've always been with them. And I thank you for their courage and bravery in sharing their story today. God, would you bless them and bless everybody here. Uh, we love you, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I hope you guys have a good week. Thank the uh, children's care workers. I think we're a little late. <laughs>